Let us now take the third model from simple interest and compound interest where we are going to discuss questions related to varying rates of interest. In these cases, the rate of interest is not fixed, but it varies from period to period. Let us take some examples to understand this. The first example here is if rupees 20,000 is given as loan for a period of 3 years with interest rates as 5%, 7% and 9% for the first year, second year and third year respectively, what is the total amount that needs to be paid at the end? So as we can see here, 20,000 was given as loan. So very clearly this 20,000 is the principal amount. It was given for a period of 3 years. So the time period here is 3 years. And the interest rates are 5%, 7% and 9% for the first, second and third years respectively. That means the interest rate is not constant. First year we need to pay 5%, second year 7% and for the third year 9%. And the question is what is the total amount? So we need to find out the total amount A that needs to be paid at the end. We know that total amount is nothing but the principal amount plus the interest amount. So principal is 20,000. We need to find out the interest here. Now going by the formula, the simple interest here can be calculated as P T1 R1 by 100 plus P T2 R2 by 100 plus P T3 R3 by 100. The point here is for different time periods, the rates of interest are changing. So for the first time period, interest R1, for the second time period, interest R2 and the third time period, the interest is R3. So by substituting the proper values, we get the required simple interest. And since the principal is constant for the whole period, we are taking it as P. So by taking P common, we can get the answer as T1 R1 by 100 plus T2 R2 by 100 plus T3 R3 by 100. Now let us substitute the values to find out the simple interest. The principal as given in the question is 20,000. So 20,000 into T1 is 1 year. For the first year, the rate of interest is 5. So we can take it as 1 into 5 by 100. Then for the second year, only for second year, that means the time period is 1 year, that is the second period here. So for second year, the interest is 7%. So T2 will be 1, R2 would be 7 by 100 plus. Similarly, for the third year, the interest is 9%. So 1 into 9 by 100. So this comes out to be 5 by 100 plus 7 by 100 plus 9 by 100. That is nothing but 5 plus 7, 12 plus 9, 21 by 100. So answer overall answer here would be 20,000 into 5 plus 7, 12 plus 9, 21 divided by 100. So by simplifying this, we get 200 into 21, which is 4,200 rupees. So this is the total interest that needs to be paid at the end. But the question says, what is the total amount? Total amount, as we know, is nothing but principal plus interest. So the principal here is 20,000 plus the interest is 4,200. So we can say that the total amount A would be principal plus simple interest. That is 20,000 plus 4,200, which comes out to be 24,200 rupees. So the overall answer for this question would be total amount is 24,200 that needs to be paid at the end. Now one very important point to be observed here is in the question nowhere it has been specified whether this is a simple interest case or a compound interest case but still we have taken it to be a simple interest case because as I have already mentioned when nothing has been specified in the question we always have to take it as simple interest case. So going by the thumb rule that is if nothing has been mentioned in the question we can always take it as simple interest case. So we find out the total interest and then total amount is principal plus interest. Now this is the normal way of solving the question where we are using the formula for varying rates of interest. The formula here is nothing but simple interest equals to P1 T1 R1 by 100 plus P2 T2 R2 by 100 plus P3 T3 R3 by 100. But since the principle is common we have taken it as P all across. Otherwise going by the concept of percentages the same question here can be solved in just one step as we have discussed in model number 1 and model number 2. The simple point to be understood here is as this is a simple interest case, in the first year we get 5% as interest. In the second year we get 7% and in the third year we get 9% on the same principal amount. That means very clearly the total interest that we get would be 5 plus 7, 12 plus 9, 21%. And the question says what is the total amount? We know that total amount is principal plus 
simple interest. So principal is 100% plus the interest that we get in 3 years would be 21%. That is equal to 121%. Total amount 121%. So this should be equal to what? As the question says, what is the total amount? And we know that the principal is 20,000. So very clearly the principal always should be taken as 100%. That is equal to 20,000. So the point here is 100% is equivalent to 20,000, 121% is equivalent to what? By cross multiplication, we get the total amount as 24,200. So as you can see here, instead of writing all the steps and going by the formula, we can simply understand what percentage equivalent has to be calculated from the given percentage equivalent. And cross multiplication will give the correct answer. So always try to use percentages for solving the questions from simple and compound interest so that we get the answer in just one or two steps. Let us now take an example on varying rates of interest for the case of compound interest. The question here is an amount of rupees 10,000 is taken as loan by Vivek at compound interest charging 5 PCP that is 5% per annum for first year, 10% per annum for second year and 20% per annum for the third year. What is the total interest to be paid by Vivek after 3 years? So as you can see here, this is a case of varying rates of interest where the interest for the first year is 5%, for the second year is 10% and for the third year is 20%. And the principal amount is 10,000 as an amount of 10,000 is taken as loan. So this is the loan amount that is the main amount or the principal amount. So the principal is 10,000 on this principal for the given rates of interest we need to find out what is the total interest to be paid by Vivek after 3 years. And very clearly this is a case of compound interest as specified in the question. So we need to find out what will be the total CI at the end of 3 years that needs to be paid by Vivek. Now going by the formula for varying rates of interest, the amount, the total amount can be calculated as P into 1 plus R1 by 100 whole power T1 into 1 plus R2 by 100 whole power T2 into 1 plus R3 by 100 whole power T3 and so on. So this is how we can find out the total amount to be calculated for varying rates of interest. Since the principal is common, it is taken out. We have 1 plus R1 by 100 power T1, 1 plus R2 by 100 power T2, 1 plus R3 by 100 power T3. Where R1, R2 and R3 are the different rates of interest for different periods T1, T2 and T3. So with the help of this formula, we can find out the total amount at the end of the given period and from this amount, when the principal is subtracted, we can find out the compound interest. Why? Because we know that compound interest can be taken as amount minus principal since the total amount is nothing but compound interest plus principal. So first we need to find out the total amount and from that when we subtract the principal amount, we get the required answer. So as for the given question, the values here are principal should be 10,000, T1, T2 and T3 are all equal to 1. Why? Because T1 is for first year, T2 is for second year, that is a period of one year again and T3 is for third year, that is again a period of one year. And R1 is equal to 5, R2 equals to 10 and R3 equals to 20. So let us first find out the total amount that has to be paid at the end of three years with the help of the given formula. So we can say that the total amount here will be equal to the principal is 10,000 into 1 plus 5 by 100 into 1 plus 10 by 100 into 1 plus 20 by 100. That actually is power 1, power 1 and power 1 since T1, T2 and T3 are equal to 1. So this can be simplified as 10,000 into 105 by 100 since 100 is the LCM, 100 plus 5 will give you 105, 105 by 100 into the second term here would be 100 plus 10, that is 110 by 100 and the third term would be 100 plus 20, 120 by 100. So by simplifying this calculation, we can get the total amount. So as you can see here, the 200 gets cancelled with 10,000 and we have 105 into 110 into 120 divided by 100. 120 by 100 can be taken as 6 by 5. Since this is 20 into 6 and 20 into 5. And 5 goes 21 times in 1 out 5. So the final answer here for the total amount would be 21 into 110 into 6. So by simplifying this, we can get the total amount. 
21 into 6 is equal to 126. 126 into 110. 126 into 110. So by multiplying 126 with 110, we get the answer as 13,860. So we can say that the total amount that has to be paid at the end of 3 years is 13,860. But since the question says what is the total interest that has to be paid after 3 years, from this total amount we need to subtract the principal. The principal here is nothing but 10,000. So the total interest can be taken as, as I have already discussed, amount minus principal. So 13,860 minus the principal amount 10,000. This comes out to be 3,860 rupees. So the total interest after 3 years would be 3,860 rupees. So this is how with the help of the formula for total amount, we can first always calculate the total amount and from that we can subtract the principal to get the compound interest. If the question is what is the total amount that needs to be paid by Vivek at the end of 3 years, we can stop here itself. But since it is about interest, we need to go for the next step that is amount minus principal. But friends, going by this formula is a lengthy procedure. Why? Because we need to do the solution in a step by step manner and then from that we need to subtract the principal to get the required answer. Instead of this, we can again use the concept of percentages to find out the required answer. For example, here we know that in the first year the rate of interest is 5%, for the second year it is 10% and for the third year it is 20% per annum. Now as discussed in model 2, compound interest can always be calculated as net or effective percentage that is A plus B plus AB by 100% where A is the rate of interest for first year and B is the rate of interest for second year. But in model number 2, A and B were equal since the rate of interest was fixed. But as in this case, the rate of interest is varying from year to year, A and B will be different from each other. So what we need to do here is find out the net or effective percentage for these three percentages and that will be equal to the compound interest in terms of percentage. So let us first calculate the net or effective percentage for 5 and 10 percent. As already discussed, the formula is A plus B plus AB by 100 that is 5 plus 10 plus 5 into 10 by 100. 5 into 10 is 50. 50 by 100 is 1 by 2 or 0.5. So 5 plus 10 plus 0.5 would be equal to 15 plus 0.5 that is 15.5 percent. That means the compound interest for the first two years together is 15.5 percent. After calculating the net percentage for the first two years, let us now take the effective value that we have obtained with 20 percent to find out the overall percentage for three years. And again that can be taken as A plus B plus AB by 100. So that will be 20 plus 15.5 plus 20 into 15.5 divided by 100. So 20 into 1 and 20 into 5 is 100 and 5 here goes 3.1 times. So the overall answer here would be 20 plus 15.5 that is 35.5. 35.5 plus 3.1 would be 38.6. So the overall answer would be 38.6%. So now we can say that the total compound interest for these three values together would be 38.6%. So our question is 38.6% is equal to what? And we know that the principal is 10,000. That means 100% is equivalent to 10,000. So if 100% is equivalent to 10,000, 38.6% would be equivalent to what? We can cross multiply or otherwise even directly we can say that the compound interest here should be equal to 3860 rupees. So this is how you can find out the compound interest directly with the help of net or effective percentage formula. And here we need not find out the total amount and then subtract 10,000 to get the required answer. Directly the compound interest percentage can be obtained and we can cross multiply to find out the required answer.